Here's Tonga, and here's their flag bearer, Peter, and he's hot. Peter Tofa Tofa, look at that. That eye-popping costume, the coconut oil, the traditional dress, that is how the world was introduced to Pita Tafatafua, his country's flag, as he walked into the opening ceremony in Rio. And you remember we met him at the Games and he told us all about the Olympic dream in Taekwondo and two things that he hoped to achieve in Rio de Janeiro. I had two goals coming in. One was that the world could see Tonga. And, and could see the Pacific, you know, we we're, we're a small part of the world and it was important for me to get our culture and get who we are out to the world. And the second goal was obviously a gold medal. Um, never been done, never been done with Tonga, so yeah, we've achieved the first goal, so now the second. Well, that didn't happen, but he certainly succeeded in getting people talking about Tonga. As I said, no gold medal in Rio, but his Olympic dream has not died. And as we learned on the Olympic Channel, he has a new goal and a new plan for 2018. I'm going to be taking my Olympic dream one step further, and I'm going to be representing Tonga in Tonga's cross-country skiing, the first ever male cross-country skier. But first I got to get across there, so I got to qualify. And my goal is to let people see if I can do it, they can do it. So there you go. When we saw that, we knew we had to follow up and find out about this new adventure. So, yeah, this morning, although it's not morning in Brisbane, Australia, but Peter Tafatafui is with me again. Hello, Peter. It's so good to talk to you and to have you talk to Canadians again today. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing really well and uh, and glad to see you as part of this. Launching this whole new plan. I have a one word question to begin, Peter. Why? Why? Why not? Why not? Uh, there's, uh, there, there's a few reasons why. Uh, one is that, you know, the, the dream, the dream's still there. You know, after Rio, I thought, you know, I thought I'd be you know, tired from all the training, but I just, uh, I felt hungrier. Um, I, I, you know, I'm ready to, ready to go and challenge myself in, a, in another way. <laughs> in a whole different way. Of all the Winter Olympic sports, though, why cross-country skiing? Uh, cross-country skiing, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a sport which I really respect, but it also, it also represents to me something that's, that's uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm scared to do it. You know, there's, there's so much... You know, I'm nervous, um, I'm excited at the same time. It's such a hard sport. And, you know, I'm all about pushing myself to that next level and, um, and more importantly, about showing other people that they too can push themselves you know, push themselves to that next level to get out of their comfort zone and try something completely new. <laughs> I love that, out of your comfort zone, because we're going to look at some pictures, some images that were up on the Olympic Channel. Uh, not to be disrespectful, because I'm a horrible cross-country skier, but um, based on your early attempts, I think this is going to be an uphill climb for you. <laughs> it didn't go so smoothly in some of these early tries. The, uh, I'm, the, I'm guessing that, so the footage you're looking at, I've, uh. you know, I've had, I've had four minutes... Uh, probably four or five minutes all up on skis. <laughs> so that was your very first time. Well, that's not too bad then, if you're doing that well on your very first try. But it's going to be a learning curve. Tell us about, you know, where you're going to train and what the process is going to be to get to this Olympic dream of Pyeongchang. Okay, so I've got, um, I've got one year uh, to get across, you know, to, to make it to the Olympics. The, you know, I'm heading across to Germany uh, to train with a German trainer over there, Steve. Uh, I and I'm heading across there at the start of the new year, so at the beginning of January. Um, he'll be giving me my first real lesson. And um, as, it, as it turns out, uh, they've uh, put me into the uh, World Championships in February. So my, it's trial by fire, sink or swim sort of thing. Okay, that's um, hilarious. So you're, you're leaping right in <laughs> at the World Championship level. <laughs> uh, I guess it won't get any harder than that, huh? <laughs> well, that is good sport. This isn't a joke, right? This is serious. No, I, I, the Olympic thing, uh, for me, it's, it's something that started when I was 12 years old. And, you know, it's another opportunity to try and, you know, try and help Tonga to try and get that, get that Olympic gold. You know, I'm, I'm not making any, um, you know, I'm not trying to trick myself or anything. It's, it's going to be hard. These guys have 20 plus years experience on me. But it's, it's very important for me, and I really want to get this across to people, that, you know, I'm putting myself out there in, uh, you know, in an international stage in a sport which I've, I know nothing about. Um, so it's important for me to, 
to let other people know that they too can do something like this, to not fear trying something completely new just because of criticism, what other people think, or because it's, you know, going to be difficult. Isn't that terrific? I love that. That was uh, what we learned about you when we met you in Rio in the summer, and you're continuing it, just transposing it to a different Olympics and a different sport. You won't be the first, if it goes well and you do qualify, you won't be the first Tongan Winter Olympian because we had that loser, Bruno Banani, started out as a bit of a marketing hoax, but he did actually compete, and he was 31st out of 39. So you have somebody as a precedent. I don't know, have you talked to him at all about it? I, I haven't spoken to him yet, but... Um... You know, over so he, you know, he went across and he he improved. Right. And my goal here is to also to improve. You know, my first competition is not not to win; it's to finish the race. Like that's my first goal, <laughs> and then to set a benchmark and then to move from there. Beautiful. So I would be remiss as I let you go if I didn't ask this on behalf of some of the uh, members of my team who are big fans of yours. If you do qualify and you do go to the Olympics in Pyeongchang in 61 weeks and you do go, you probably be the only Winter Olympian from Tonga. So that might mean you'd carry the flag again. Is the national costume for the Winter Olympics the same as it was for the <laughs> Summer Olympics? Um, winters, you know, from uh, I think it's it's a it's a lot colder over there, so I'll either need a much thicker layer of uh, coconut oil or uh, <laughs> or something a little bit more interesting. But um, you guys are just gonna have to wait and see. We will. Couldn't be much more interesting, Peter. Come on now. It's so great to uh, to reconnect. <laughs> Best of luck pursuing this Olympic dream, and we'll be following as this uh, gets underway for me. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you so much.